This video is only possible thanks to viewers like you. To support the channel and get more, go to patreon.com slash optimistic duelist and subscribe. Link in the description. The premise of Hive Swap Friend Sim is simple. You have crash landed on the alien planet of Alternia and now wander about learning about the laws, customs, and lives of Homestuck's most infamous cultural export, trolls, as you indulge an intense thirst for friendship. What follows is a series of wacky adventures spread across 18 volumes with two trolls in each one. Initially, all that ties these wacky hijinks together is the setting of Alternia itself. Friendsim is designed for a reader who hasn't yet read Homestuck, and it does a great job acclimating them to weird, complicated ideas like the hemospectrum and quadrants. In my opinion, it does an even better job showcasing a few things about Homestuck that even most longtime fans are often unaware of. Chief among these is the sheer power of the Alternian Empire and how it brutalizes and isolates its citizens. In Homestuck, Alternia could feel a little bit like an afterthought, save what it meant for the Homestuck cast proper. Friendsim makes it feel nuanced, vibrant, and lived in, and the violence at its center heartbreakingly vicious. On Alternia, everyone is hurting. Even the upper classes of trolls meant to enforce and benefit from the Hemospectrum. Alternia is, at once, a sometimes eerie mirror into the social, cultural, and political problems of our world, and a depiction of the worst of all worlds, a warning of what we could become if we aren't careful. The first half or so of Friendsim is dedicated to just feeling out the nuances of this awful reality. But then we get into the second half, and from here on in, I need to give you a full spoiler warning. If you haven't played through the friend sim and you don't want to know everything that's going on in it before you play, stop this video and go play through it now. I promise it'll be worth it. Still here? Alright. In later volumes, things get increasingly weird as the reader starts remembering events from timelines where they died or failed at making friends, simultaneously as timelines where they succeeded and survived, gradually becoming more aware of the metaphysical, metatextual nature of their own existence. In the process, the narrative explicitly explores many ideas Homestuck only portrayed indirectly or symbolically. All of this is in service to the story's final twist. If you finish every troll's path, you're summoned to the chambers of one Doc Scratch, the demonic, demiurgic god who made Alternia the way it is in the first place. As casually as he brags about exploiting the lives of the friends you've made, he reveals he's exploited you, too. The white text at the start of every Friendsome volume was his voice all along, handing you your script, commanding your actions. Everything you experienced, Every friend you made and lost, every spurt of pain or happiness you went through, all just to subtly manipulate your friends into place for one of his nefarious ploys. Your story was only ever really about him setting up the next phase of the story of Hive Swap. Friendsim ends with you helpless and alone against this monster. It's not a victorious ending, or a reclaiming of freedom, because those things are impossible on Alternia. Denied both your life and your future, you can only ask to understand. And so, Friendsim is revealed as a prequel not just to Hive Swap, but to Homestuck. Having lost your primary character trait, your forced desire for friendship, you are now asked to become the MSPA reader, the actual character reading Homestuck inside the comic itself. This recontextualizes everything about the Homestuck reader's experience. Now, when you watch Alternia obliterated for the sake of the beta trolls, you have your friends to think about. Everything Tizius wanted to change, that Daraya wanted to escape, that everyone wanted so desperately to survive, it all ends here. Not with a bang, but with a glove. The Empress who made your friends miserable moves on and does it to another planet, of humans this time. And for what? What was so important that it was worth all of this misery and slavery, all of these stolen futures? In MSPA Reader Mental Breakdown, you get your answer. Creating the monster just next door to you, the one who manipulated you all in the first place. The last time we see the Reader in Homestuck is in this flash, 
taking hold of their own gun. The implication is that the reader will kill themselves, in keeping with the long-running gag of the reader getting fed up with MSPA and offing themselves built into the website's history. There's layers to this gag now, though. I don't think the MSPA reader has a specific class, because I think their role is simply to observe and witness the story, not to directly impact it in text. But I do think they are by nature representative of the aspect of hope. That is, our ability to have faith in the story or reality that we're perceiving. To believe that these are things which carry a deeper, worthwhile meaning. Absent the hard-coded personality trait Doc Scratch assigned them, this hope is really all there is to the character. The reader reads the story of Homestuck, hoping for an explanation, maybe a silver lining, perhaps a victory? At the very least, they have to be hoping for the mercy of knowing they exist in a story that's good, damn it. That all of this suffering adds up to a narrative that's at least worthwhile. But Homestuck is ultimately written by Doc Scratch and his boss, Lord English, so there is no such relief. The more the reader reads Homestuck, the more ridiculous and convoluted the story becomes, and the more despair-inducingly clear it is that Lord English is in charge of all of it. It's heartbreaking. It's infuriating. When MSPA reader snaps, it is because their hope for the story has shattered, leaving only rage in its wake. And the story is MSPA reader's reality, so when they give up on the story, they give up on the world, on life, on their friends, and on themselves. This is the nature of Lord English's evil. Through his mastery of the story, he attacks the reader, us, the audience. Through a combination of hopelessness in the face of his overwhelming power, and deep frustration with the absolute buffoonery of his poorly told story, often directly worsened by his rage-bound agents. Through these means, Ellie breaks our will to care about Homestuck itself, as well as anyone and anything in it. Or at least, that's what we were there for. That was the plan. But did he? After all, the story isn't over. MSPA Reader has not yet been seen dead and Homestuck itself, while completed, seems set to somehow continue. And now, MSPA Reader understands everything. So the truth is still unclear. Have they stopped caring? Have they given up? If the MSPA Reader is also asking these questions, then, dear listener, what will they do? I hope we find out sometime. Before we go, I have to give a special shout out to the writers of Hiveswap Friendsim, who I think have done a stellar job expanding the lore of the Homestuck universe and making it more meaningful to the reader. Given statements that Andrew Hussey has made in the past, it's hard not to read Hiveswap Friendsim as the official beginning of the Paradox Space Extended Universe, where other authors get to play in this universe in an official capacity and add their contributions to its world. In that respect, Hiveswap Friendsim has succeeded marvelously, and it makes me tremendously excited to see where this universe and these characters are going to go from here. A particular shout-out has to be made to Aisha Farah, who wrote the largest amount of Friendsim volumes and was the driving force behind the overarching narrative of the Friendsim. That said, I look forward to see what all of them do creatively in the future, and in case you're interested in doing so too, I'll be including their accessible social media in the doobly-doo. In particular, if you haven't listened to the perfectly generic podcast episodes featuring Aisha Farah and other friends and writers, I highly recommend you do so. They're very illuminating stuff. I hope you'll look forward to that. Until then, keep rising! Huge thanks go out to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to help support the channel and come join us at our awesome and growing Discord community, feel free to join us for as little as a dollar a month. You can also find me on the r Swap Reddit and Discord. That's all for now, so thank you again, and as always, keep rising.